do it. And so we try not to make a lot of reading requirements. Um, and we do other kinds of experiential interview types of things. And we imagine that we're related to them for the rest of their lives, so it doesn't all have to happen that year. But we're thinking more about analysis. So we, our hope is that at the end of the year, people are better equipped to look at issues of justice and sort of look for issues around power, race, and class. And like, so they don't, they don't become experts on every issue or every sub-piece of anti-poverty work, but more it's like, how do we think critically about this and, who else, and develop relationships so that as a network, now it's not just like the 18 people in my house or the 60 people who did it this year and I'm going but it's the whole network of 450 people who then become people who can rely on each other. So as you sort of develop more questions, look for jobs in different areas, you have other people who you can also learn from, not just the staff. Um, and we've started using Google Sites also. I'm like the queen of Google Sites because they're free. Um, <laughs> and so we, for alumni stuff, we've been doing that a lot. And also in the year-long program, I would say, we, for each topic, we, we kind of, like that's where they get their readings. That's where they get their weekly announcements. Um, we did a PSOC site this year for alumni. So that, and the idea was, okay, this is a holiday. And I would say we walk a line of like people, I said, have a whole lot of different religious connections to Jewish life. And so we don't want to, because it's a pluralistic organization, we're not trying to be so observance oriented or so not observance oriented. Like we want people to be able to find what they need in the Lada community. So we felt like Passover is a great holiday to start with because the theme about liberation <laughs> like really resonates in the community. Lots of people, I mean, Passover is the most observed holiday. People have seders who like wouldn't do anything else Jewish the whole year. And so we put up resources, we invited people to share both their own readings, rituals, things that they use at their seders, even if they're going to a seder that totally doesn't speak to them, things they could read. And we're doing the same thing for Elul. And we're planning to do one for, um, for life cycle events. Like people want to incorporate social justice and service into their life cycle events, um, and it will become a repository for sharing. Do you want to add anything to your example before? Sure. Um, well, just speak a little bit more broadly about his own one specific example. I think you all got a handout on our theory of change. Um, yes. Okay. Um, so, well, there isn't a you know formal model per se. You know, his own really does have a pretty laid out and thought through model of change. I feel like particular to this conversation, I think um, the fact that as an organization, we are, are not value neutral, that you know, we are coming from a place of Jewish values and um, that while we use the term service, which is actually some, a word that Hazan does not um, often use, you know, ideas around obligation and responsibility and real values that are already connected to those are a place that we're coming from. Um, and I feel like that's a real tenant of when we're thinking about the different programs that we do. Um, I'm sorry, I, I just, I have a question. What do you think why you don't have resources? And like why we don't use service? Yeah. Um, you know, I would say if you look, if I run through some of my programs, you'll see that, you know, the uh, um, bike rides that we run, I'm not, I'm not sure, but it hasn't, the word service sort of hasn't translated there, our food conference, our education curriculum materials, um, our probably some of our largest pieces, you know, again, those, um, perhaps the word service could be used as, you know, Hazone it has a growing area of developing other nonprofits and incubating them, um, but not sort of, I think, how perhaps it would have been de be defined per se for these two other organizations. Um, so, so while we're not value neutral, I would say actually we, we don't try to bang people over the head with a particular. I know we, we've heard the, the the importance of letting people know, but we, we really we, that's not our interest to be able to say you know after a own program we're going to have you also pick up this particular value and it has to be you know, this and that's the way it is, but rather to really create frameworks for people to be able to experience different teachers, different ideas, um, different actions, so that they could then be able to decide for themselves the choices that they want to make in their lives. So in many ways, the people who, for say, come to our annual food conference, you know, there are people who will leave and, 
you know, very much have decided that you know an important value for them is the fact that they had participated in services and actually touched a Torah for the first time in their lives, and something feels accessible in you know a more traditional Judaism to them. And at the same time, there's others who say, I want a garden. And having a garden is how I'm going to express my Jewish identity. Um, and we don't come in saying it has to be one of those. We're just providing a platform. And I think that really um, is true for all of the different pieces that we do. Um, we are running a, in a pilot phase of a program called Home for Dinner for uh, synagogue families to really start to encourage them to try and have one more family meal a week than they norm than they are doing right now. Um, but again, there's many different layers of sort of the ultimate results of that program. You know, in terms of families being able to come together and look at some of the food security, insecurity, hunger issues in their community as they're thinking about their own meals. Um, in terms of actually taking on roles and responsibilities in different ways um, in their own homes. There was one time when a um, we had parents and students at a, a chef on Long Island cooking a meal together, and this mom was just amazed that her daughter was able to, you know, cut and not cut herself and not make a huge mess. And you know, she sort of was like, "Oh, I can like invite my daughter into the kitchen now and you know work with her in this way and um, put a meal together." And for us, for this one particular program, if the result is a mom and a daughter cooking together or having more meals and being able to discuss the values or that they realize that there's actual you know, people who are experiencing food insecurity in their community, all of those are good. You know, But we're just creating a platform for those different pieces. Uh, and the last of the pieces, though, there's many that sort of uh, many more outlined that I'm going to talk about, but I feel like is applicable here is the value of an immersion experience. And I think that all the organizations that are sitting up here have that as at least one component of something that they're doing. Uh, and I feel like that is just, uh, it becomes a framework and a basis for people to be able to continue to draw on, I think, throughout their year or years. Uh, I think if you look at a number of different organizations, environments, or otherwise, you know, whether it's Teva or Azamat as well, Friedman, or you can have a long list, like this real immersion in um, an opportunity I think is just uh, worth noting. So I think there are many different ways it can happen, but I think it's a place to be able to draw from. Okay. One of the interesting things for me listening to the panel is that there isn't a specific um, action or behavior that each of you are trying to have participants go towards and do. It's really you want them to leave asking more questions, having more resources, having a network. It's, it's like actually you're trying to just open them up to the world, I mean, to a broader, another section of the world they might not have necessarily been exposed to. Well, um, I think we would say that we want them to pursue justice and like keep doing this more. And I mean, we struggle. We're also doing a logic model. Because if you're related to Repair the World, we do a logic model. <laughs> um, but when we're talking about evaluation now, and we are. I would say, like, we're really struggling with the, it is about the kind of identity building of the people in the program, but it's also about alleviating, alleviating poverty, although can we measure it? Mm -hmm. So I think that we're kind of doing a dance in this particular area. And, and people on staff and on the board don't all feel unified in yeah. what it is that, you know, we want to do both. Because you clear, clearly have different Foci, right? You're focusing on poverty, you're focusing on international development, you're focusing on food justice, and I'm not sure about food justice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but, but it's easier, I think, to talk about social justice in terms of the questions and mm -hmm. um, the text than it is necessarily to talk about specific behavior that they're going to do afterwards, because there's many different behaviors that one could take from a social justice education or curriculum. Did you want to add something? Well, I just wanted to I say, say that just like Abadai, AJWS is also going through a massive strategy.